how you all doing? Welcome to episode 13 of McGoldrifts. And again, efforting as I have been now for the past few months, trying to bring the best and the brightest guitar players in Boston. And I have exactly that right now. Jody Frawley, one of the very best. Uh, I've never met her. I've been in uh, seen her con uh, concerts many times. And, um, you know, so I'm really just happy to have her in here. And so I'm going to do a, a short intro of a bio of Jody. Um, singer and guitarist uh, Jody Frawley is recognized as one of Boston's premier vocal and guitar talents. Jody was a top 10 finalist in Guitar Player Magazine's Guitar Player Superstar 2010, chosen from contestants from all over the country. Uh, Jody was hand selected out of 200 contest contestants to perform live with Steve Vai, uh, just as last week's uh, episode, uh, the guy there, um, Joe Mack. Yeah, yeah Joe yeah. Mack as well. And uh, that must have been something. And prior to, um, to that, Jody was recipient of Boston's Best Guitarist. Again, like I said, I'm bringing the best to you folks here. And it's free of charge. Uh, in March of 2013, she was mentioned in Guitar World magazine as one of the 10 guitar players you should know about which is an amazing thing. Uh, her musical talents have, gone, uh, uh, have not gone unnoticed in the professional community. Jody has been a clinician for Line 6 Amps, uh, Fishman and Seymour Duncan pickups performing in LA, uh, Vegas, and Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, her band, uh, Star Faithful, which plays around here all the time, so you've got to check them out, has played in uh, Europe three consecutive years, as well as touring the East Coast. Her songs have been featured in on All My Children, which I'd like to talk about that. And that's a whole new thing that musicians can do. There's so much content that is required and needed with the world of Netflix and everything like that. There is a way to make music for and uh, make money for musicians in that world. So that, I'm fascinated <coughs> by that. I want to talk about that. Um, and on As the World Turns, which was my mother's favorite, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Star Faithful has released three CDs recorded with producer uh, Anthony uh, J. Raster. Uh, he's done uh, Collective Soul and Duran Duran, and John Ellis, who uh, worked with Godsmack and Neil Schoen. Um, she has recorded songs with drummer extraordinaire Mike Mangini, whom I don't know, but he's played with Stephen Vai, Extreme, and uh, Dream Theater, and Chicks and, and Sticks. Uh, she does a great deal of recording sessions for other musicians, such as Hirsch Gardner, Joe Black. I think you're in an album with, uh, yeah, with my Johnny. buddy Joe Mack on, on that particular thing. Oh, which Johnny. Was Johnny John Johnny uh, Johnny Press was on that, right? Yep, yep. And was that recorded at Art uh, yep, Kniff's yep. Uh, studio in Art? Yeah, that's why I have the Splon. <laughs> oh, really? I yeah, want to talk a, about here sp too. Um, Art is, an, I don't know if you got to hear him play. He's oh, an amazing I, guitar player. For about the nicest so guy in the world Absolutely. and about the most humble. And I want to talk Definitely. about a little bit about that. It was what I've noticed over the years when the years I was at uh, Berkeley. Um, I mean, Chick Corea was there, Pat Metheny was there, um, Gary Burton was there, and a lot of guys you probably never even heard of. Who And it's one thing I noticed is the humility and the humble nature of the best players. Mm -hmm. And I've, it, it's really at the mid-level and lower level where people have the egos. And at that high level, an art is as good as it gets. And oh, my you God. Just, yeah, um, he's, he's a monster. He's so good. Um, so you've re recorded with all those far. Currently, she's the, uh, the lone guitarist and, and covers all female vocals on Love Sexy, a Prince tribute band, um, which is is great tribute band. That's a whole world. I'd like to talk a little bit about that. Um, Jody Frawley and the Unfaithful is her original cover band. So you've really got three or four things going on. Yeah. Um, and, and that's kind of sort of a difference that when I was in the 70s and 80s growing up, you really stuck with one band. And that was it. That's all you did. You lived and died by it. Today, um, I was talking to another friend of mine. She was saying that uh, you never know what's going to really take off. So you do a dozen yeah. and many, many. And you get your name out there. And that's good. She's also playing acoustic solo gigs all over the place. Um, and um, works with a guy by the name of Brian uh, Eggleston. So, um, Jody, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Thanks thank you very me. much. Um, so I want to do the basics here. So okay. where did you grow up and why did you do this thing? Uh, I grew up in Marlboro, and uh, I started really young um, playing guitar. Like mm -hmm. I was seven when uh, when I first. Which is young. Yeah, you know? it's, it's, it is really. The young. bell curve. That's probably the low end of the bell curve, quite honestly. Um, and the high end is fifteen. You know, and uh, some amazing play. I think Satriani didn't stop playing until thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, I think Alan Holdsworth too. He was yeah. he was older. You know, some sort uh, of when thing. He started. Some of them actually. A lot of them have done other things too. Did you play any other instruments? No. Just, just, did I. just guitar. You know, and it was basically because we really had no money. Yeah. And I really wanted to play a little bit of piano, but I really wanted to play guitar. But piano, um, you know, to the young kids at home, uh, 
piano is just a fundamental instrument. You should have a little bit extra, uh, you know, yeah, working it's just, it's, on that. And it's, we just didn't have the money for a piano. It's laid out so much more logically than, than a guitar. And back yeah. when I was a kid, you couldn't get an electronic one. You had to get a piano. Oh, yeah. And we, we just couldn't do that. So seven years old, seven years old, why? What got you, what turned you on? Um, what th was the thing? Seven years old is what grade? Third grade? I think, I think it's second, second grade. Second grade, yeah. Second, second grade. grade. Yeah. I, I saw something on, on um, Alice Cooper, and, and I saw the show, and I, I knew I wanted to do something with music. And, uh, Alice Cooper? Yeah. <laughs> and Alice Cooper, you know, sometimes people don't realize how important Alice Cooper is and was. Um, he's just, if you read anything, you, uh, he's got a great video. He did a great video, which was, uh, he was a speaker at uh, Musician Institute of Tech, uh, MIT out in the other MIT out in LA. Yeah. It was a great thing if you can look that up on, 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 because um, he's just had an interesting career. One thing he's known for is he has the best guitar players. Oh, he yeah. gets A players all the yeah. time. There's a, uh, I think it's called Sidemen or Hitmen or something like that. Yes, uh, I saw that. A great video yeah. of the guitar players of Jody's Caliber playing with the very best. And um, so it was Alice Cooper. Yeah. Like um, 18, that tune. That first album? Um, you know, I don't remember. No, I, I, yeah, you I were a kid then. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't remember what it was. I just saw a live video. And, you know, my, my, I have an older brother, too. So he would he had all, was constantly listening to, like, uh -huh. music. Did he play? Like, no, nope, no. Nope, but, but he, you know, and my dad, you know, would, would love music. My mom loved music. And so, I mean, I was kind of immersed in And did they support music. you? Oh, God, In the music yeah. thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Absolutely. Both parents. Yeah, they would come to my shows. And, cool, cool. Yeah. So what'd you get? Was it an acoustic? First I got an acoustic, yeah. Yeah, then... that was like at action like this. Action yeah. is how oh, yeah. the strings are above and then very difficult to play. And that's one of the big things if you're a parent out there is get something that's playable. Go talk to a guitar player who can help you pick something out because nothing will stop you from playing from guitar if it's physically hard yeah, to. Yeah, if it hurts. If it, but I was yeah. the same way. I had the nothing guitar, but I didn't care. Yeah. I didn't care. I played it forever. So... Seven years old, lessons? Yeah, I took lessons. My parents sent me le lessons every Right week from the beginning? And, yeah, yeah. Legit reading stuff? Or? Yeah, reading and, you know, just doing that. And I mean, I, I probably didn't absorb as much as I probably should have at that age, mm -hmm. you know. But I mean, at least I was playing and I kind of took a little time off and... Um, and then when I was like a teenager, I, I met a friend of mine who was doing like Randy Rhodes stuff and Eddie Van Halen stuff. And I was like, what oh. teen years? Like 13? Young teens? Probably 13 or, yeah, probably 13. Um, and I was like, oh my God, this is what I want to do. What were you doing before? Like that, uh, during that time, was it CFG? Yeah, the, just, you know, the just open in thing. reading music, you know, in like, right, you right. know, I wasn't playing like kind of the stuff that I wanted to play. Right. Um, but so, so I, you know, and then I would kind of like, you know, try to figure out songs on the, you know, on, on, you know, music on the radio, but, um, and that was pre YouTube, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you really had, and there wasn't much temperature out in no, those days, no. right? Which uh, that's another way people learn these days. Um, when we were kids, uh, you just had to use these two things on the side of your head, which and hope that you're kind of in the ballpark, right? And so, tell me about the Randy Rose thing, because you're. Um, I've talked to a bunch of people about you, and the word shredder comes up. Yeah. You know? And, and it, what, what do you consider yourself? Um, As a guitar it depends player. on it depends on the the situation, right. you know. I mean, some things, you know, I like to I do like to shred sometimes, yeah, but yeah. I mean, I've kind of dialed that back a little bit. Um, you know, I, I I play in a country band. I play can, in. Can a you funk give the, band. the people you know, the at home an example of shredding? Oh jeez, because um, um, I can't do it. <laughs> it's on my. <laughs> That's what we're talking about, shredding. It's just amazing stuff. So Randy Rhodes was the first guitar player with, um, with Ozzy. Uh, Ozzy Osbourne, who actually unfortunately died in a small plane crash when yeah. they were just screwing around during some break. And, and I'm a pilot. I've been a pilot for many years, and I don't know really what happened there, but it sounds like some stupidity on the pilot's part. And one of the, he was young, 20-ish. Yeah. yeah, he was in his 20s, early yeah. 20s. Yeah. I forget who came in after him. I think it was the guy from Night Ranger. 
Um, yeah, he, he actually um, came in to do some live shows. Um, and I don't think he recorded anything. In I the, don't think he did, but he yeah. was uh, just on a, another show I listened to, the uh, um, No Guitars Left Behind, and I was just listening to him, and got, just got called up by Ozzy and, yeah. and flown into L uh, to England, and they were really stuck. They were in a bad situation. Oh, yeah. yeah. And difficult stuff to learn overnight. Right. So what happened after that? You're just seeing all this sort of stuff, and... And what? Um, yeah, so, you know, I just kind of took that and started, kept playing. And Did you take some lessons? Did you find somebody who mentored you at that point? Well, actually, my friend, who 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 was like the Randy Rhodes guy. So he showed me a bunch of things. And uh -huh. then, was and he then, older? Uh, yeah, he was a, a couple years older than uh -huh. me. Playing yeah. in bands, so he had that. I don't know if he, pl he wasn't really playing in bands. He was kind of more like, you know, would just sit in his room and learn, yep. you know, that and, and you know, then he would kind of show me stuff. So, so it, was, it was it was great. You know? And were you the kind of kid? Were you in the room all day Saturday, uh, from eight in the morning till eight at night? Um, when I was learning that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there was one part of um, my life where I, I worked at a Ticketmaster, and it was like the size of this room. Mm -hmm. And like some days, nobody would come in for, to buy tickets. Right. And I would bring my guitar every you have day. You guitar, right? And I would like just just practice like with a metronome and like do all these make up these charts. Okay, I can do this exercise at this speed cleanly. And you know, I was such a geek, kind of doing it that way. You know, but I but I would bring my guitar in every day. And that's a great lesson for the kids at home, sort of thing. If you had an opportunity, if you want to do this for real. Um, just find time that you can do it. Uh, I, mean, I spent a lot of years in the, in the business world, did a lot of traveling, and I had a baby tail with me. They yeah. would just slip under, you know, in front of me or in the overhead. And, um, you know, I wasn't the type to go drink down the bar. I'd be upstairs, you know, right. and not schmoozing with people like I probably should have been. I'm upstairs practicing my guitar, yeah. you know. Yeah. So then what happened? Were you playing in bands in that 15, 16 year old world? So when I was like 15, I started, I joined a, a school band and we played out and, uh -huh. and then just kind of played in bands ever since. And yeah, just, uh, mm -hmm. and anything in high school, any like the jazz band, legit no, you stuff know, we like didn't, that? We didn't have a jazz band in my school, so uh -huh. I wasn't able to do that. So I was just doing the, you know, the high school band. And what tunes were you playing? Oh, God. Because um, you're a, a little bit younger than me, so I'm thinking it's maybe yeah. that 90s stuff. Yeah. The grunge yeah. stuff, any of that stuff? Um, or is it more of the metal stuff? More more of kind of like the metal stuff. But we would do like, you know, older covers too, you know. Um, mm -hmm. We did like a, like a big mix. And then, you know. Did you I, sing that? I didn't. I didn't. Uh -huh. um, Why? It, um, they had a singer and... And then that singer left, and then we auditioned singers, and, and look, we couldn't find any, you know, finding the right fit for right. any band is always, you know, either musically or mm -hmm. personality-wise. And so I said, well, I saw some of the girls that were coming down, and and, and uh, so I said, well, maybe I can try it. You yeah, know? yeah. And so you became the singer in your high school year? Yeah. 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 And was that a trio? Was it four folks? It was, a, it was a four piece, yeah. Was it all guys in you? No, it was all girls. It was? Yeah. Wow, cool. Yeah. Cool. And the caliber, were they, did you start doing this? Because a lot of what I see with players at your level, they start doing this and the high school band starts here. Yeah. You know, I don't want to, you know, <laughs> disparage any of your buddies out there, <laughs> yeah. but um, um, I'm betting you kind of took off a bit. Um, well, I, I, I played with them for a couple of years and then I just went off to, to play with some other guys. Like I just... You know, I mean, I didn't, I didn't really want to limit myself to just playing. Right. You know what I mean? Like, because the, the players that, that I wanted to play with were, were better and, and they were guys. So. And, um, I mean, that's a lesson. At the end of the day, I've heard from somebody, I don't know who it was, is always be the worst pe person in the band because it'll just bring you up. <laughs> if you play, keep on playing with. And that's why I love doing this sort of thing. I get challenged by meeting these guitar players and just trying to hang with them. And um, I love it. So you were playing with some folks who are a little bit older and maybe pushing you to yeah. up your game. Yeah, yeah. And so you're like a high school senior. Then what? What was your decision? Because I know where you went to school. What yeah. led to that? Um, what were you thinking? Well, I, I, I never thought that I'd be able to do music as a full-time job. Right. You right. know, and that's a um, good thought, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I'm only kidding here. You know? it's, a, it's a difficult life. I've said this a thousand times yeah. on the show here. It's a 
whatever art you want to do, is it dance, it's just painting, whatever art you want to do, um, making a living, getting a mortgage and, you know, paying off kids' college and stuff like it's tough in the art world. So you're 18. What are you thinking? What are your parents thinking? What are you, your guidance counselors telling you to do? Um, well, I, I, I just kind of, um, you know, I wanted to do music, but I didn't, I didn't know if I was going to be doing it. Right. Know? Right. Um, and then, uh, Couple years after graduating, I, I went to. Oh, Berkeley. so you had a spot between high couple, school and years. college. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I, so I went to Berkeley and. and Let uh, me tell you about those two. Uh, tell me about the two years. Were you gigging? Um, I was gigging. Yeah. Around here. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And and uh, you know, I, I started studying with um, some of the Berkeley professors uh -huh. before I went to Berkeley, and then um, I even. I, Anybody I, in particular you can mention? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Jim Kelly. Oh, uh, Jim, okay. he goes back to my days in the 70s. Yeah, is he he's, still around? Uh, as far as I know, I, I, okay. I think he's still teaching at Berkeley. He's, Were you taking lessons at his house or going into the I school? went to his house. He lived in Milford, and I, so, uh -huh. so I started. He, he was good friends with my boss at this music store that I taught at. So um, Was that that music store in Milford? In, in actually, Marlboro, uh, Mr. C's Music. Uh-huh. Um, so he was good friends. They, they played in bands together. So, so you I, were teaching there and also taking lessons from Jim Kelly, which yeah. is also a good lesson. It's like... Um, all the main, something that wasn't happening when I was a kid is you think of the major guitar players. I think about like a John Harrington, who's a guitar player in Steely Dan. Mm -hmm. He gives lessons. Uh, yeah. Rusty Anderson, the guitar player with uh, Paul McCartney. Oh, yeah. He gives lessons. And the miracle of today is uh, Skype and things like that. Right. You don't have to go to New York. But so Jim Kelly, when I was at Berkeley, he was only a little bit older than me. Um, and what I liked about him and another guitar teacher at that time, Jim Anderson, is with they were playing some of the Martin stuff. And I mean, I love the jazz stuff, and I play all that jazz yeah. stuff with. And Larry Balin, hopefully, is going to be. Um, you know, he was one of my professors at Berkeley. Um, he's going to be on this show too. But I kind of like. I never had Jim Kelly as a teacher, um, but he had the Martin stuff because I wanted to combine the Berkeley jazz stuff with what. What happens with Steely Dan with the edge of rock and kind of right. melding that together and guitar players like uh, Larry Carlton and, and people like Lee Rittenauer and Robin Ford uh, after that, you know, uh, were the kind of thing where I wanted to go down. So you're taking lessons, so you're getting that cool stuff. Yep. You're, you're learning all the scales and, and all the, you know, all of that stuff. And, uh, um, what else happened during that period of time? Um, you know, I was still I was still constantly playing, and then I, I also studied with John Finn, so that was kind and of he's more. He's well known. I'm on Facebook, but I don't know him. Yeah, he's he's another amazing player, really yeah. cool guy, and and um, I, I, that's where I learned like all my modes. You know, kind of like right, that. that's where right. I really kind of dug into those. Um, and then then I went to Berkeley, and and mm -hmm. I just kind of. I was I was teaching and I was commuting into Boston, right? And I was still playing in bands, so it was like, okay, you know, I could do more of this, but it's it's just too, you know, um, it was too much. So mm -hmm. I so I ended up, you know, I'm just gonna take from some some of the other professors that mm -hmm. that and, and just learn what I want to learn, right? You know, so um, then I studied a couple of a few lessons with Bruce Bartlett, who's another. I don't know him. Oh, he's. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Another great guy. And so did you not graduate there? Did you? Oh, I didn't graduate, no. Yeah. no I just How many semesters did you go? Just two. Just and, two. and that's, back then, uh, that's more what Berkeley was known for. Berkeley yeah. was known for a semester or two or three. Yeah. And there's some um, monsters who've just done that sort of thing. Yeah. And, um, and a lot of people have told me uh, the best thing about Berkeley these days are the connections you make. Yeah, and it's, it's, if I were to do it again, I would have stayed there. You know, right? I wouldn't. I wouldn't have been commuting back to Marlboro because that's, you know, that's. Yeah, and I was the same thing. way. I, I mean, we didn't have the money. I mean, it was a lot less expensive in the seventies. Believe me, I don't know how much it was, but I know that I got scholarships and grants. I didn't have to pay for. Yeah, it. Yeah, same here. But, and in the nineties, even it, uh, like that's when I went. It, I was there in ninety seven, um, and it, it was just, just you know, still really expensive, even with a scholarship. You right, know, so, right. But and now it's it's. Babs and Bentley, it's like 50, yeah, it's, 60 grand, it's, it's something ri ridiculous. Yeah. But um, so you did that whole thing. Did you get into jazz at all? Because when I was there in the 70s, they were forcing you into jazz. I was like the first year they let, let I went to Berkeley, and I've said this story before, with a Marshall and a Les Paul. 
yeah. in long hair. And yeah. left with short hair, a three thirty five and a boogie, <laughs> you know, wow. and immediately went on the road and had to relearn how to play commercial rock and stuff. And it's like, oh, yeah, I got to do that kind of thing again, because yeah. that's how you make money. <laughs> right. So what happened after that? Um, so, so yeah, I, I didn't really, they, they didn't really push the, the jazz thing on me. Um, I, I love. Yeah, it was 20 like, years later. So it, uh, they realized that, I mean, Berkeley's become, if you want to make a, a, a living as a musician, go to Berkeley. Yeah, you know, and yeah. maybe not that much with some of the classical schools. Yeah, and, and there's so much you can do. You know, whether you're in being in production or you know business. You know, even if you're not doing a performance. Yeah, there thing. were four majors when I was there. Really? Were you a performance major? I didn't even declare a major because I oh. only went for for right, two a semesters. Of semesters. Yeah. yeah. Um, so did any? I still want to say in the Berkeley thing. How about any of the ear training, any of the arranging, any of that harmony? Oh, Harmony's yeah. been a big key for me over the years. Yeah, and ear training is, is in ear know. training. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. These are sort of the basic tools, like a plumber's tools, is the basic tools you need to know. Um, ear training, you need to know intervals, you need to know harmony, how uh, music, and I've said this before in the show, that music is a, um, there are chord progressions that make up a song, and each chord in the progression has a numeric value, and I'm sure you're like me, I go down the street, <laughs> as I was telling, uh, it was Joe, right, last week, and um, every now and then, because I play in a, a commercial duo, I try to force myself to find out what's modern and what's new, because you know, nature, my age type thing. So I listen to Kiss 108. It's painful. It's very difficult. Oh, yeah. It's very <laughs> You're difficult. You're braver than I. <laughs> but uh, everything's 1645. And I'm talking musician language, and the musicians at home will know it. It's like, I mean, all the same beat. It's awful stuff. But I'm sure you're going down the, the street, and you, you can hear. Oh, one, that's a two minor. Oh, that's a four minor there. Oh, that's a flat seven. I think it's a flat seven. Sometimes you have to break out your guitar, but I'd say 90% of the time, I kind of know... I played last night, and I had three or four people sit in. The tunes I didn't know, but, you know, like Take It Easy. I mean, I played it a million times years ago. Right. It took about a half a second, you know. Yeah, yeah. And that's where you get to be, and you got to be as a musician, if you're going to play with a lot of people, um, especially in the studio world. You just got to nail stuff. So you did the Berkeley thing. You got the crux of what you needed out of Berkeley and, and all that sort of stuff. Then what happened to Jody Frawley? Where did you go from there? Um, Tell me that Jody Frawley star story. Um, I, I just kept playing in bands and and uh, and then. Uh, Anyone I know? Um, do you know AJ Valley? That rings a bell. I, he I'm plays probably... with he do, he's he's done some stuff with uh, he's done some stuff with um, the Southern Rock All Stars. So mm -hmm. it was like Molly Hatchet guys from Molly Hatchet, Leonard Skinner, and I forget who else. He's mm -hmm. my drummer. Um, so he's uh -huh. he's played with like them, and he he'll play with. Um, uh, John Butcher sometimes, and he's an amazing drummer. And what else? Uh, what uh, was influencing you then, right after the Berkeley stuff? Was it always metal, or no? No, and I wouldn't. I mean, even you say played metal. some cool funk stuff earlier. Yeah, and I mean, you're playing I, in the number one funk thing in the business, which is Prince music. I, lo I love Prince. Right. Um, but I mean, I've always loved like funk stuff. I've always loved like you know. I mean, I. I I think back then I was more narrow-minded when it came to music, but you know, as I as I've gotten older, I, I like I love like Mike Stern. He's like got to be mm -hmm. one of my favorite guitar players. Big Telly guy. Oh yeah, and totally. he can get that yeah. jazz sound out of yeah, Telly. Like... So good, um, and even like Western swing. I, I'll listen to that like forever. I love mm -hmm. that stuff. Like you know, Helicasters or Speedy West and Jimmy Bryant. Um, so so I mean, I'm I'm constantly listening to different guitar players mm -hmm. um, and try to take what I can and put it in my style, but, yeah. So what that happened after that? You So you're with this A.J. Valley, and, and have you been with him the whole time, it seems like? Um, well, I mean, I've had drummers before, but, you know, this is kind of like, you know, what I, what I did, like, after Berkeley, um, and uh, my bass player, and we did a trio, and we did, you know, some stuff, uh, went overseas to, to the Azores, and right. got to play over there, like, three right. years, and... Okay. I saw some videos on that. That's oh, very really? cool. And it's on, I think, YouTube. I definitely really? did see oh, something right. okay. out there on that. So yeah. tell me about your current bands and what's going on. Okay, so we play in Star Faithful, which... Um, and what's Star Faithful? Is that just a name or is that your nickname or what does that mean? So it, it, it's it's actually a name of um, a person in the, in the 1920s. Uh -huh. And she was from this area and um, she was murdered. And the main suspect was the mayor of Boston, who was her uncle, 
who was having like no relations. Way. Yeah, it was it was this. I, I saw a, um, a, a show on it, um, and and it was like a really interesting story. It was you know really tragic, um, and they never found the killer. And the you know the 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 main suspect was the mayor of Boston. Uh huh. So it was kind of a scandal at the time. So we I thought we kind of thought that that was kind of a cool, cool. name, Star Faithful, and kind of a. And what's the crux of your effort? Is it Star Faithful, or is it the original thing, or what is it? Well, Star Faithful is, there... is the original thing. Oh, okay. So we'll, we'll do, you know, we'll, we'll we do original. Scene. So that's Jody and Jody and the right. Unfaithful is because it's not Star Faithful, and I do like a lot of covers in that. Okay. You know, we'll we'll just like play and you know. So it's not Star Faithful, it's Jody and the Unfaithful. So tell me about the um, guitar player superstar 2010. How did that come about? Um, I saw the thing that you, you enter for it, and and uh, you just send in a couple of videos, and they they pick um, ten people to go to California, and and I so I made up a couple of videos, never thinking you know that I would get picked to, right. to go out there, and and I and I got picked, which is just crazy. So and so, what was it like going out there? Did you have to go to Top Play Magazine and play uh, we, no, Michael Melinda and those guys? I, I did meet Michael. Um, he's, a, he, he's a great guy. Oh, he really is. Do you follow his Guitar Guardians thing? Yeah. Yeah, Gu I Guardians am too. Guitar. Right. Yeah. Um, so it was it, it was in uh, Livermore, California. And, uh -huh. and it was like the 10 of us would play and, and like... Were the, they all shredded types? Um, no. The guy who won was an acoustic player. And as soon as I saw his video, I'm like, oh God. This was he like a Tommy was, Emanuel? Yeah. Oh, that that yeah. scares me. Oh yeah, yeah. He, he Look up just, Tommy Emanuel if you if yeah. you haven't yet. <laughs> yeah. Um. And, and as soon as I saw his video, I'm like, this guy's gonna win, <laughs> and he did. That's cool. <laughs> but um. But I mean, there was just so many great players, you know, in there, and and uh. So it was it was it was quite the experience. It's interesting. It's just um. There are so many great guitar players. Yeah. And the older I get, the more I appreciate. And I'm, you know, tell me, uh, you know, I, again, I've sold this story a thousand times because I'm old and I tell stories. I saw Al D. Mueller and Al was like 19 and I was like 18. Yeah. I was a freshman at Berkeley and I was like, it totally depressed me. I'm like, I can't do that, you know. But now I'm different. It's like I get inspired. How absolutely, about you? Absolutely inspired. Yeah, you know, there's a little bit of that. Oh God, I will never be that good. But but you know, it, but it's it's but like when you good see that. Too. To find good, it's like I can't. You know, I do a lot of cool stuff in my acoustic act that I know most people can't do, and that's how I say I can do this. Right. But I bet you Satriani I can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's 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 you know, kind of what you what your whole thing is what what you want to do about it. You know. Um, now this um, guitar player thing did it lead to anything? Um, I think it got me in the, 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 the uh, Stephen Vai thing? No, no, that was, that was actually before it. That was, um, that was, uh, Guitar World? Yeah, the yeah. Guitar World thing. Yeah. Um, got me mentioned in that, so. And how did that lead to something? Um, no, not really. <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting. It's, um, you know, talking about how many great guitar players there are in Boston. Yeah. And, um. Uh, you know, where they are. And uh, people who aren't musicians, it's like, well, you're not Eric Clapton, so who are you? It's yeah. like, uh, Jody can play better than Eric Clapton, man. I'm telling uh -oh. you right now. <laughs> but, you know, you do your thing, and he does his, his right. thing. Yeah. 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 But it, it's getting that, like the Michael Jackson. I could see you doing, Oranthani, is that how you say or, it? Or Orianthi. Yeah. Orianthi. Or I think that's I don't know how, it's like, I could see you doing that. Yeah, that would be a great gig. But, um, unfortunately... He's dead now, so... <laughs> right, right. But there yeah. are millions of those gigs, and that's right. why yeah. we both listen to this podcast by Jude Gold from Guitar Player Magazine. He's not with them anymore. Um, the whole magazine's having some issues, but something called No Guitar Left Behind. And his whole story about these sort of side guys that nobody knows, except right. uh, us guitar players. If you're players. a guitar player, yeah. Right. Yeah. So tell me then about this. What's it like playing with Stephen Fye? Did that scare the oh heck God. out of you? Oh my God! It was, at the time, he 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 was my favorite guitar player at the time. Right. And so to get picked to play with him, it was just let me interrupt surreal. you. At that story, show I was just talking about that Jude Gold thing. <coughs> Joe Satriani and Stephen Fye grew up next to each other down in Long Island, I think. And Joe was Stephen Fye's first teacher. Yep. And Joe had to stop teaching Stephen because. He was just, and and I I have to admit I miss both. I was never listened to those. I, right. <laughs> I'd love to listen to Mike Campbell of uh, you know um, 
uh, Tom Petty more. It's just because yeah. that's what I yeah. like. Yeah, and, you know? and that's that's and that's get, the good thing about having that many guitar we go players. Back to that whole thing. What's the greatest guitar player? It's like what's the greatest car washer? <laughs> it's like you know, what's yeah, or the what's the best this? food? It's 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 right. It's, it's like so sometimes subjective. Chinese is good, sometimes Italian is yeah. good. It's yeah. uh, you know, it's just great stuff. But could you imagine? Joe Stratiani saying to Stephen Vai, it's like, no, man, you're too good. You got to go somewhere else. Yes. That's yes. A, so tell me about that thing again and how you got that. Um, so once again, it was a contest. And once again, I, okay, I'm just going to put in, I had an instrumental. And it was very Steve was Vai-like. Was it the tape, uh, the tape days or was it no, was a, it was a CD. CD? It was a CD. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so, I, so I sent it in and, and uh, they... Uh, to whom? Uh, so so uh, I think I think Guitar Center was putting on... Um, Guitar Center or Daddy's? I think it was Guitar Center, yeah. and um, and so you send in it, and 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 they, I think they went through with it, like and picked out like ten ten people, and then Steve I would listen to it and picked it, um, and so he picked mine, um, in this location, uh -huh. so then Rhode Island. And so, we, so where'd you play? Uh, Lupo's. In Lupo's Rhode is Island. A, in the big room, like the auditorium room. Yeah. What was that like? It was. It was. Crazy, scary. And what did they have an extra amp for you? Yeah. Oh that yeah, work? they had one set all set up for me. And and did you bring your pedals? And, and what did you do? No, I just I just showed up. I, I I was actually working for uh for line six at the time, and so I got the call. Hey, you won! And so I had to come from work to drive there, and I was like, oh my god, that's you know. Luckily, I had a guitar in the car. <laughs> right. Uh, really. So, what'd you play? Um, just just a jam. Yeah. He was, he just, like. Just kind of like a... Yeah, we just jammed it and it was just, you know, like I had two seconds, you know, okay, what do you want to play beforehand? Okay, uh, how about this? And, and so then, then we played it live on stage and... And, uh, it was... Did he seem like a good guy? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He seemed. I, I've, and I've met him a couple times. I did a master class with him afterwards, and I got to play with him then, and that was that was great too. Yeah, Joe Mack who played with him. I had to do a um, Jeff Beck tune, you know, mm -hmm. an exact tune I, that we kind of goofed on last time he was here. And then he asked him if he did this uh, black dog. Oh, black dog. Yep. Yeah, you know, some you know. Led Zeppelin. Like a more complex black. He didn't know. He said, "Okay, forget about it." But that was a better way to go. It's always a better way to go rather than like, you know, I, I'm not good at memorizing every song in the world. Right. I always get this when I'm playing. You, you get in your soul, oh, do you know X, Y, Z? Right. And, and I've learned how to handle that, that sort of thing. It's like, you know, I, no, I don't. But, you know, it's a great song. I'm going to learn for you I do next time. <laughs> and, and it's like, or, or if you say, you know, no, I don't know that song. It's like, you don't know. I mean, I know yeah. the song. I just like, haven't memorized like it You're supposed to know like a yeah. gazillion songs. Can, every song you're just like me <laughs> at this point. I've been playing 50, 60 years now. It's like um, I can pretty much play anything. I don't know everything. <laughs> right. And, and to sing so, it too. You know, they expect you to like, you know, sing, like know all the vocal parts to it too. Right. Know, just, right. Cool. So um, tell me about uh, gear uh, and, um, and tell me where we're at now. Tell me about your career. I wouldn't really want to talk about. So you were a clinician for Line Six. What was that like? Because I'm. And let me interrupt. I don't want to disparage. Because you, do you still work for him? No. Okay. Because yeah. I've played one or two of them, and I just can't figure them out, and I don't want to. Yeah. I like basic. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, I yeah. went. It's got all these buttons. It's like, and I know, I've actually played with one of the Line Six things that that was easier, but the yeah. amps. Yeah. Uh, maybe I never had any. I just did a jam recently, and I just made a fool of myself because I couldn't get a sound. Just saying, turn down. It's like I don't know how to turn it down. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was my job. Is is I was one of the product specialists uh -huh. in in this area, and one of one of my part of one part of my job was to go into the stores and train the guys how to use the amps and and just sit and play play guitar you know like mm -hmm. okay play you know a jazz thing through this setting or you know like a metal thing through this setting or you know blues thing through this you know this this amp model um which before that i would never go into a guitar store and like why is that just you're a monster I just I, I would never I, I'm it's to still to this day I won't go into a music store and play loud <laughs> yeah I don't like to do that either yeah. and um I, I nothing against I have buddies that um music around there over and they they're great have good stuff I buy 
Nine, and I buy quite a bit of stuff. It's an issue. Yep. <laughs> um, you know, every day there's a, my wife has stuff coming from Amazon. I have stuff coming from Sweetwater. I buy everything from Sweetwater. Yeah. I love those guys. Yeah. They know more about it than what I do. Uh, but I did just recently, I'll tell you about gear. I just bought a, a Boogie Triple Crown. Oh, yeah. Have you ever heard of that? I haven't heard of the Triple, triple Crown. Triple no. Crown's their latest thing. Yeah. And it's solid clean, great crunch. Boogie Overdrive, yeah. and you know, like a little pedal that will give you a little bit more of a boost. It's everything you need. You don't really need any other uh, pedals. So, so yeah. I love it. And I bought it at a place. Here's a plug for my buddy at Axe Palace. Have you been oh, there? No. Oh, where's you that? Have to go there, Jody. Where is it? It's two miles from here in Walpole Center. Okay. And it's um, build it, and they will come. Like the Field of Dreams. Yeah. It's like you go, especially a person with your sort of background, because it's really got all the kind of cool sort of metal guitars and they're really cool they were younger than me they were in their 30s so they were able to help me i went in i had an f50 boogie that i you know it was done you know i was sort of a, i had a mark ii that i bought in the 70s that i loved and uh -huh. I, I bought the f50 i never was happy with it so i sold it on craigslist whatever and i had cash on me so i went over i went over there to buy a mark V, which is their combo because that's you know i'm an older guy just one speaker probably and this guy's not Come here. <laughs> and it was great. So um, Axe Palace, check them out. Okay. And um, yeah. and so you said you're working for Fishman. Now, that's more in the acoustic world. Right. Yeah. yeah. Although they are doing electric pickups now. They are, yeah. for like replacement for these sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Cool. And you're no longer with them? No, no. Um, cool. My position was... Um, everybody who had the position that I had throughout the country got yeah. laid off. So, but that they are still a great company, and I use I use their gear like. Now you being sponsored by anybody now? Um, just 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 Fishman. Um, Seymour Duncan. I was, um, but I'm so bad about like the business side of things and and you know renewing things and so um, so now I haven't. Cool. And and I've seen that with, uh, you are younger than me, so younger folks in our businesses, it's like, you need a manager or an agent or somebody like that. Somebody, because it's one thing I'm good at is uh, hustling. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm horrible. It, like, I, I hate to even book shows, you know. Um, but it's like, you know, the evil, the necessary evil. Right, know? right. So uh, I'd like to talk to you. We'll talk offline on that sort of thing. So... Tell me about what your current gear is, and then I want to get into your current band. Um, so it depends. What is on, this you're playing? Oh, this is an N4. This is uh, the American Washburn, the Nuno model. Mm -hmm. um, I like these because they're. Have you ever met really Nuno? Tiny. Oh yeah, he grew up. Yeah. He's. I thought he actually. was locally from. Yeah, he's, he grew up in the town next next door, and uh -huh. he was always, yeah, always really cool. And in fact, that's how we got our, our gig over in the Azores. Is is, is uh, his brother um, mm -hmm. plays and. and uh, monster player too cool but but yeah nuno is amazing and and so this is his sponsored model yeah yeah this is uh the american washburn n4 it's it's very dirty the, i should have um, cleaned it up before i <laughs> is that a floyd rose or yep. is that yeah yeah and yeah. with the fine tuners and yep yeah. and that thing you can bang the heck out of it yeah it's 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 it definitely seen better days it's 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 uh you know. and that's your main axe one of them. It depends on it depends on the the, the gig. You know what I mean. Yeah. This is the Star Faithful. This is the Star Faithful rig right here. Really, and that's what yeah. thirty watts. What is this amp? Tell me about the amp. So this is a Splon. Um, this is the Splon. It's beautiful purple. I love. The yeah, look the, the, of it. the great thing about them is that you can you can pick your Tolex. You can pick the the, cool. the piping and you know all the so the, this is what I. What I and tell me about it. What's it have? Is it thirty watts, 40, 50 watts? Oh God, uh, I think this one is forty five watts. How many channels? Watts? Two channels. Two channels, so it's like an overdrive crunch type channel. Yeah, so you get you get your clean, and then you get your dirty. Um, so right now I'm on. The... What do you use for like a crunch rhythm sound? I use. You just use the volume down. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I usually work with this, just kind of. You don't use a volume pedal? 
Uh, do you use a Wawa or no? I do. Oh, yeah, that's especially and with the Prince What's this on the floor? What are you using that for? So this is just a delay. Um, this okay, this cool. amp doesn't have any... any um, no reverb? Any reverb, yeah. No reverb. So oh. so I'll, I'll, usually for soloing, I'll just kind of turn it on just to give it a and little bit. And what was the connection to Art with this? Oh, he has he has a couple of these in his in his studio, and so uh -huh. when I recorded um, the, the the CD with uh, with Johnny Press and Joe Black, I I played through Artie's gear. Um, so. And now, what'd you grow up with? Were you a Marshall type? Yeah, I had mostly Marshall. Marshall yeah. stacks and just yeah heavy duty carrying yeah. those things around. Yeah, yeah. So um, well, we have uh, tell me about the current bands right now. Um, so Star Faithful. Cool. So um. How big a band? So it was a three piece, but we added a keyboard player. Oh, so, cool! So now we have a keyboard player. Keyboard now. players are also hard. Yeah. Are you singing all the tunes? Yep. So you're doing what four sets? Um, it depends on the show. You know, a yeah. lot of times we'll do two long sets. Uh huh. Um, or if it's like a festival, we'll do one long set. Right. So, um, and so. how's that on your voice? Yeah. Oh, I, 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 This summer, I've, I've done like. Sometimes eight shows in one week. Have you ever taken any vocal coaching, vocal training? I did. Yeah, with whom? Uh, Mark and Baxter. Um, oh god, he's number yeah, one. He's he's, he's, he's so guy. great. He's amazing. Um, and then it, I took a few lessons from this guy in New York um, called Don Lawrence. Who now is Mark local? Um, well, the thing is with him, he's he's in Boston. You can take lessons from Boston, but he's also in California, and he's also uh -huh. in um, I think New York. So he's he's like everywhere. So if you want a lesson with him, he picks a day that you know. And and I I've uh, stressed this with vocalists. Uh, we as guitar players, we have books, we have videos, we have we uh, taken lessons. And I I've unfortunately seen a lot of singers who think, well, God gave me this voice. So it's like it doesn't work like that. It's just like lifting weights. You can lift weights and say, oh, my arm hurts. Yeah, because you're doing it incorrectly. Right. And I see that with a lot of the young singers work. And I work with about 12 different people in my duo right now. And, mm -hmm. and who's available? I can't do about 10 to 15 gigs a, a, a month. It's hard to get the great ones to do all of them. And some of them, you know, need that training. Yeah. And and, and I, I hope they don't, you know, think I'm trying to disparage them at all. It's just there is a way to do this to not get hurt. Yeah, it's Especially just, in a band. Right. Are you using inner ears? No. No. I have used them in it, and they were great. But in that situation, it was, you know, I trusted the sound guy, and, and that, that's what the band was doing. That, that was... Um, I, mm -hmm. I did some shows with Beetlejuice, um, and they they all use in airs, and, and right. it was it was great. But nobody, none of the other situations that I'm using are using the in air. So I'm just kind of relying on monitors. And so, tell me about the Love Sexy thing, the Prince tribute. So I've uh, been doing that for like nine years, um, mm -hmm. and we just just got a new singer, um, which is kind of exciting. Um, yeah, I would think the singer is the show. Exactly. I yeah. mean, because you get to kind of look like Prince and sound Yeah, like, although, you know, our, our like older Prince. singer didn't really look like Prince, um, mm -hmm. but he sounded like him, you know, and so we were like, okay, you know, he sounds he sounds like Prince, you know, and that's not an easy thing to do. Um, no, so, Prince is Prince. Yeah, yeah. so um, we just got a new guy and, and uh, we get some shows booked, so we're going to... Just start our, our, our first. And that's the tribute the world. October. The tribute world's a totally different world these days, and there's a, it's a good business for musicians, you know. And I, I mean, I'm not a big fan of the world, but it, it's people like it. If you know, in lieu of the act not being alive anymore. Right, right, and that's the thing is, you know, I mean, to play Prince songs. Do you know Arrow Chicks, nice. the woman from oh, yeah. Arrow Chicks? Yeah, I know those guys. You know, I've yeah. met them. They're good, yeah. and and they they're working a lot too. Yeah. And yeah. and you know, I mean. Uh, but how many Prince tributes are there out there? I don't know of any others in New England. Um, there may be one other in New England, mm -hmm. but I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think I know of like two other two other Prince ones other than us. Cool. Um, but now we have a video. I want you to talk about the video, who's on it, and what's it about, and we're gonna fade to that. Um, so the first one is um, my band Star Faithful. It's mm -hmm. just a video. Uh, we, we recorded the song Drowning and uh, we uh, did a video for it. And, cool. And yeah. I'm sinking down, down, down in the depths of a deep blue sea and I'm drowning. Sinking down, down, down.
what else is for Jody here? What's coming down the pike? What are your goals, aspirations? Where you you go right now with your career? Um, I mean, I'm just playing out. You know, I'm just just doing music. You know, full time and. And uh, I mean, if I could, you know, play with a national, that would be that would be great. You know, if I could get a. Are you like putting that. your name out for those sorts of things? I'm really bad about that. I'm. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, here's where the manager this is comes why in. We want, I do in this video. See, so you got one of the best uh, guitar players in the nation right here in North Forecast, and Don Henley. Um, who else? Paul McCartney. Uh, <laughs> anybody else out there who's looking for? You know, a great guitar player. You got her right here. So, what do you want to fade out with? I don't know. Thank you.